Merhaba, kolay gelsin. When I look at these pictures now, it just it makes me I don't know. All the kids were so great, and just to look at them, their little smiles, the way they use the pencils, it's just so touching to see it again. Uh, I came to Istanbul 10 years ago now, initially as a holiday, but I really love the city and I decided to move here. Uh, being an artist, of course, that's easier because you can set up your studio where you want to. Actually, um, when I first came here, I lived in a house just one street up from here. And every day I used to open my window and see this precise view that we're looking at now. And I think that just made me, made my decision very easy that I, this is where I had to stay. I think being Greek and living in Istanbul is quite easy. I go, people are like, oh, come to like, like neighbors, neighbors, you know? So it's so close, the cultures are very close. So for me, it was very easy. This is my husband James and this is our little son Philip Ruzga. <laughs> Say hello Philip. <laughs> and um, we chose to call him Ruzga because we like the name, it's a very old person name and in Turkish it means the wind, which we like very much. Yeah. Turkish is part of his heritage, you know, he might ask one day why his middle name is Turkish. The sea's always been very important to her, you know, and she really has these the great big waves that really make you understand how small you really are. I think I've always been just magnetized to blue, whether it's Prussian blue, whether it's uh, ultramarine, you can see it here. It's just there's something that draws me into it. Coming from Greece, we always think of the Bosporus as a magical place. There's like songs about it and this and that and the other. So I think I was very, very inspired by that. Just looking at the, the tanker ships passing through the Bosporus and their, their slow movement in this like blue mist that you have on the Bosporus. So that definitely inspired me a lot. And a lot of my paintings then started to become about the sea and really giving into that exploration. We're now at uh, Sultan Ahmed Square. It's one of the central places here in the old city. As a center, it's quite significant because we had one bombing just here a month ago. And of course, everyone knows Istanbul was hit just a couple of days ago. So for the artistic community to visit these places is quite significant because there's quite a, an important debate right now between the artists, do we stop or do we continue? Do we let the fear overtake us or do we continue being creative and work through this? So, of course, the, um, the question of the, the refugee flow is a, a huge one for our time. And uh, of course, I don't think that every artist has to be involved politically. And at the same time, I'm not a fan of some art projects that are, you know, take a life jacket, put it in a gallery, and that means something. I personally, that's my personal opinion, the prefer doing practical things. Like, for example, an actual workshop, you know, where these kids, it will be something that these kids will remember, hopefully. <laughs> of course, um, shows them a way, a creative way that they can release their emotions and process them. And it gives them an outlet to process what's happening. I'm, uh, I'm on my way to Project Lift now, which is a great charity. We do great work with children. So uh, I can't wait to have a meeting with them. My idea is to have this workshop with the kids to bring them closer to the idea of the sea. And from what I understand, these kids are not exposed to the sea or the concept of the sea in the same way. So that's why I need to discuss it with you. Since our kids are Syrian refugee children, um, most of them are 
are accustomed to the idea of sea because um, there's a lot of them who are running to, to Europe through the sea. So in their minds, sea is not always like a positive vacation place like some other kids might have it. It's more about an escape Whatever route. Whatever we do, we have to be careful because anything we do there or anything they see can trigger their trauma. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important to create um, both references for children because they have the negative references. That way they're not only associating them with fear and threat, but they're also associating them with everyday you know, objects and, and more positive and hopeful things. And creative process can help reshape that. <laughs> Here's a photograph by Hani Muhammad. It's uh, of a man with his nine children. He already lost in Yemen. He already lost one of his children out of extreme hunger. And I mean, these are the wars that we think don't affect us, but actually they do. They are directly related to the refugee flow we have in Europe. The refugee flow that Europe has decided to ignore, to close its borders. It's a completely unethical uh, attitude. And um, I mean, here in Turkey, Turkey has absorbed already something like two million refugees. But of course, there's only so much that they can do. So we see a lot of kids that are bright, intelligent, talented kids that, that can't go to school because there's simply not enough places for them. That's why we want to we wanna do something about that, which uh, of course entails a lot of risks as we're dealing with children that have been through a lot of trauma. But uh, we will hopefully everything will go according to plan. This is the um, Sultan Bayli Municipality building and they've given it to us to use for the workshop. Uh, I'm a little bit stressed about it, but uh, hopefully we'll be okay. Bravo, Ginaiden. 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 And That's we'll do Olga. some painting, we'll paint about the sea and some fishes. I guys have to imagine that we know what the sea looks like, but you have to imagine what's under the sea. Think about what you want the fishes to look like, um, where they live under the sea, do they have houses. Think of the whole thing as a very nice, safe place that you would like to swim there, meet the fish. Talk to the fish. No, no, we ha I'm going to learn from them. No, I'm going to learn Think of the fish, the fish swimming, swimming. Yes. We don't know how to draw uh, their houses or something. That's fine, we can make it up together. You can tell the others, can you? they can start drawing if they like. Everyone is doing the sea. Now they're doing the face, okay. Wow. Yes, ah, very good. Is this a cave? What is it? Shuhayda, I would tell the answer. It's a house for this fish. Ah, the fish. The fish yeah. lives there. Can the fish come out, swim, play? A girl sank in the water. Ah, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we need the... Uh, where is Leila? Leila? Ah, afterwards. There's um, one of the girls drowning in the water. Would she like to do something about it? Of course. Do you see the girl like this? Do you want to do something about it? Do you want to do something about it? Yeah, I, I want. Okay, how are we going to get her out of the water? Okay, how are we going to get her out of the water? Let's see where she is. Maybe he can get a hand. ممكن هيدا ممكن يساعده. Yeah, help her up. Uh -huh. Once she's done, maybe she can tell us the whole story about how she fell and what we can do to like save her. Basha, can you? Why is the why is the little fish crying? ليش استمر كل صغير عم تبكي؟ Because the monster fish is following her. Oh, okay, but now we're racing the. ليش اللي عم تبكي؟ She wanna draw her like perfectly. She's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. She don't know. When she found her mom, uh -huh. she, she will be safe. I'm so glad we were able to save her. And this little guy is a hero. He saved her. Who had the bottle?
Uh, he is the prince and the princess. Oh, oh and then he changes it to the prince and the princess. Okay. It started a little sad, but she was able to change it. Merhaba. <laughs> What's the story? What's happening here? So they are friends, and then they go up and they took the apples, and they're going back to their home to eat the apples. Wow! And he did the arrows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did the arrows. They were, they go from other I side. think I think when you grow, you will be very good with physics. Hehe. <laughs> Very nice. And he signed it here. <laughs> Let me put it up. I think this one is very nice. Me being Greek, I think we're very... I wanted to like hug the kids. And I know obviously we can't because the art therapist told us, you know, you have to, for their safety, they have to know that they have to keep a distance. Just like in the beginning, they didn't know what to do. Then slowly opening up, and then finally, like all their drawings blossomed, and like a little part of them, you could see it. It was just beautiful. <laughs> Come with me. Come with me. Oh. Let's take a picture all together with all the kids. Yes, let's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, all of you. We're in a Bebek Park and we're here to bring awareness of this project to a wider audience. We're going to make a big projection and show parts like a video of the workshop yesterday for more people to see and learn about what these kids go through and, and be informed. It's finally getting dark, so I think we're going to start. Be roll whenever you're ready, we can start. So we've made this short video which has the kids and the drawings. Uh, it's only a short video, but we're going to project it on loop uh, and try and get as many people to see it as possible from the park. So we ended up having a good crowd. Uh, the whole thing was better than I expected. And I just hope that people don't forget these kids. <laughs>